Hello backpackers, this is Juan from Juan Backpacks. I'm here to talk about a very controversial topic once again. This is darn tough socks versus another brand of hiking socks. And let's look at my assessment here between these two socks today and see which one came out as a winner. All right, so this is, might make some people upset. It might make you want to comment and that's okay. Go ahead and comment below. I'm not saying that one sock is better than the other when you see my final assessment here, but what I'm saying is I try to take an objective look at these socks over time through many miles. I wore these Bridgedale socks 250, 60 mile, 250 to 60 miles on the John Muir Trail, lots of miles in these, lots of miles trail running and hiking in the darn tufts, and I laid them side by side, came up with some categories, compared the two, and came up with a, for me, clear winner. And let's find out who that clear winner is here in terms of the socks, right? So what socks did I compare? I tried to compare like socks. So the Bridgedale um, lightweight ankle length socks, hiking socks, um, and then the darn tough lightweight uh, quarter length hiking socks. So those are the two socks I've been wearing you know, <clears throat> to do my hiking, trail running, and so forth in for quite some time. So let's see what my experience has been with them. First, I want to go over some of the stats in terms of the materials used in both of these socks, just so you kind of have that as part of the side-by-side -side comparison. Um, I'm not an expert on materials, but, you know, it's worth knowing, I think. Bridgedale, lightweight, ankle-length hiker socks, 9% new wool. 29% uh, um, merino wool, 42% uh, nylon, 19% endurophil, and then 1% lycra. That's the breakdown with the Bridgedale hiking socks. Darn tough light hikers, 52% merino wool, 44% nylon, 4% lycra. So kind of similar across the board in materials. A little bit of difference there. So let's jump into the comparison. You're going to see me look at my notes from time to time so I don't forget one of the points I want to make, um, but kind of got in my head too. So here are the areas that I compared these socks in. Number one, warranty, cost, fit, padding, drying time, wicking and evaporation, which is different than drying time in my head, comfort. So those are the areas that I assess these socks in. Let's start with the warranty, the cost, and the fit. So warranty wise, definitely the darn toughs get the nod. Lifetime warranty, got a problem, get a hole, tear, take it in, you get a brand new pair. Hard to pass up, right? Love the warranty on the darn toughs. So there we go. Warranty on the Bridgedales, no real, real warranty like the darn tough. So not much to talk about there. So obviously in that category, darn tough's gonna get the nod. Cost. Same, same. So basically $19 to $21 for either one of these pairs of socks. So the cost to you is going to be about the same. Fit. What I mean by fit is, you know, when you look at the sizing chart and so forth and you order the sock, do you get it? Does it fit? Are there weird oddities about the way it fits your foot and so forth? Um, and that's what I mean by fit. Really, both of these socks are the same. You know, you buy the size, it's recommended, you put it on your foot, it pretty much feels the same. Uh, it's a decent fit for both socks. Now let's look at the last four categories where there really was a clear winner in my assessment of these two pairs of socks. First, let's look at comfort. Definitely in terms of comfort for me personally, the Bridgedales get the nod. And I'll give you an example. I just actually did uh, 30 mile backpacking trip. I did 15 miles in these just to kind of close out my assessment side by side day back to back to back days. I did 15 miles in the darn tufts and then I did 15 miles in the Bridgedale hiking socks. And so it actually just confirmed what I had been kind of assessing anyway over time between both of these socks. So definitely for comfort, the wind goes to Bridgedale. I found with the darn tufts, my foot slid around inside the sock itself. So my foot was sliding inside the sock and it was creating hot spots. For example, this past weekend, 
when I did 15 miles in these socks the day one, the, the first day I wore them, basically my foot was sliding and creating hot spots. And if I had to wear these one more day, and it was really uncomfortable, and if I had to wear these one more day, I know I would have had blisters. When I switched to the Bridgedales the very next day um, and hit that 10 mile mark, my feet actually were improving the way they felt in these socks. So my hot spots were improving from the day before and my foot comfort overall was improving as well. And no sliding around in these socks. Great for me. So definitely in comfort wise, the Bridgedales won or win. Wicking and evaporation. Once again, Bridgedales are gonna take the nod here. What I found with the Darn Tufts is that they tend to hold in heat. It's like my feet run hotter in them. Again, these lightweight, lightweight. Both of them are lightweight socks, hiking socks. My feet tend to run warmer in them, noticeably warmer. I won't say significantly, but definitely noticeably, noticeably warmer in the, uh, um, you know, in the Darn Tufts. Uh, and also, I find that the Darn Tufts will hold in moisture more than the Bridgedales. My feet definitely feel more warmed up and more moist. I can feel the moisture between my toes when I'm wearing these socks, and I don't feel it as much, definitely in the Bridgedales, personally. So with wicking and evaporation, definitely the nod goes to Bridgedale in my mind, in my experience with the socks. Drying time. Why did I, what's drying time? What I mean by drying time is in the field, which sock seems to dry out faster. That's important to me because I take two pairs of hiking socks, one of them gets rinsed out every night, and then I either hang it up to dry overnight, or if it's not dry, I'll throw it on my pack the next day and wear the other pair of clean socks that I already lined up like that. So <clears throat> basically, the uh, Bridgedale wins again because it dries a little bit faster, faster than the darn tufts. And I think that's important in the field when you're gonna take just two pairs of socks and you rely on that other pair of socks to dry out if it can. There's nothing more zero fun, not zero day, but zero fun than hiking in damp socks. And even when I put these both in the washer together and they go through the spin cycle, when I pull them out and I've, you know, the, the darn tufts are a little bit more, you know, have a little bit more moisture in them, a little bit wetter, than the Bridgedales. So again, drying time in the field, drying time goes to the, um, the uh, Bridgedale socks. The last category I kind of assess the socks in is padding, you know, kind of that cushiony feel you feel from your socks. I'm not a big fan of a lot of cushion. I, as a matter of fact, I do not like it. I feel like cushiony socks tend to slide more on my feet, so I try to stay with thinner socks, less cushion socks, but it's nice to have a little bit there. The Darn Tufts actually have some pretty nice cushioning, um, but for me, the cushioning in the, the uh, Bridgedales is more targeted, and I think maybe the way they do it too also um, kind of adds to that idea that I feel like they also dissipate heat and moisture better because they, they actually do like targeted padding. It's just barely noticeable. It's not like this big padded piece of the sock like around the, the um, balls of the feet here, uh, and then also in the heel, there's like a little bit thicker material. Um, and, uh, and so that's nice because it also means that the rest of the sock is thinner and it can dissipate heat better. So I think that's one of the reasons this, this sock does win out, like in terms of like evaporating moisture off my feet and running cooler than the Darn Tufts. And so I like the amount of padding, it's pretty minimal here. Which I, you know, which I prefer personally. And so for me, the uh, padding war, the padding rating definitely goes to the Bridgedale socks. So that is my assessment between these two socks. In my mind, the bridge, and in my experience, and my objective kind of observation of, of my experience in the field, uh, the Bridgedales perform, you know, much better for me personally that may not be the case for you, everybody's different. But for me, the Bridgedales are worth a look because I feel like they perform extremely well for me and uh, I would definitely be choosing Bridgedales over the darn tough. So this um, July, 
in a few weeks from now when I leave for the Sierra, I'll be taking two pairs of these lightweight Bridgedale Darn Tough socks with me, and I will be leaving the, I'm sorry, Bridgedale socks with me, not Bridgedale Darn Toughs, and I'll be leaving the Darn Toughs at home. So that may have caused you a little consternation, may have caused you a little <clears throat> thorn in the side, me saying what I said. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, definitely post up below. Be happy to read. I'd love to read your comments and so forth, so please do that. Until next time, backpackers, don't sit around watching YouTube channel, the YouTube channel. Get out there and backpack a little bit. Do some hiking. But I will see you on my next video on YouTube. So come back for that.